everybody, this is Marilyn with MKR Creations. Today I'm going to show you one of my craft fair items that I am working on for my craft fairs this year. I am making a mini planner that is small enough that if somebody wants to put it in their handbag, they certainly can. And the items we're going to need for this are um, art glitter glue, some um, double-sided sticky tape. I use the Sukwang score tape, a pencil, a bone folder, a ruler, a scissors, and then I need some chipboard. Mine um, measure four by six and five eighths, and there's two of those, one for the front, one for the back cover, and one that is one by six and five eighths for the spine. Then you need a small date book, and the measurements for your cover will depend on your date book. Then you also need a small paper pad, and this one measures three and a half by five. So to cover that, I have a three and a half by six and a half piece of paper. Then um, we also have a nine and three fourths by seven and a fourth paper. This is to cover our date book. And then a large paper that's going to cover our chipboard is 10 by 11 and a half. And I also have a two and a fourth by five to cover the inside of the chipboard if I need to cover up there so that the chipboard does not show through. Another way you can do is do like you do with a regular album and put paper through the whole inside, but that takes up a lot more paper. You can get away with less paper this way. So let me get things out of the way here and we'll get started. First thing I'm gonna do is cover all my chipboard with double-sided tape so that I can put it down on my papers. So you want to go up to the edges on this. And go all the way around. And I like to put one down the center to make sure I have enough holding power. You don't want things to come apart, especially if you're selling them. Okay, then you're going to use your bone folder to burnish that down well into this chipboard. This is a lot like how I build my albums. So if you've seen any of my album videos, then you have seen that I like to build my albums this way. Okay, so when those are all burnished down, the next thing I like to do is I like to find the center of my paper. I like to find where the straight line needs to be for putting down my board as well as the metal so that I can get this set and turn on here as best as possible to come out with the best outcome for me. Um, I have a very crooked eye and if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'll tell you that also. Um, so 
it's kind of important to me to make sure I get all that put down centered so all right so the first one centered as best you can here on the middle and press it down and then I like to use a spacer because you want a space between and this is actually just two of these put together and then I have a very thin like um, cereal box type chipboard in between the two so it's like three layers it gives me plenty of room to bend my albums so they won't crack and gives plenty of room for things to um, fold without getting caught up on themselves so All right, so this one's ready to go. You just put the album spacer that I use here. Make sure that's up against the spine part. Take this up against that and lay it down on the paper. And we'll do the same with the other side. Okay, and then we're going to just turn this over, get it pressed well so that everything stays well stuck there. So, okay, now we're going to put tape around all the edges here to get this ready to go. Go up as close to the edges as you can. You want this to stick down well. You want to take your time. Make sure that your tape is down nice and straight and on the edges without going over so that your book will have a more finished, polished look to it, a more professional look, if you will. When I go to my shows, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> suddenly got a frog. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, when I go to my shows, people are usually pretty surprised that um, scrap paper crafters make their own albums that we don't buy our albums ready made that we do them ourselves though there are if you go to um, different craft store sites and different sites you can find ready-made albums that you just have to finish yourself um, they can be a bit on the pricey side I prefer to do my own so now we're just gonna gently bend up and start folding our paper start stretching those fibers so that they start developing a memory for where we want them to go Okay, and now I'm going to take our scissors and we're going to cut off the edge here. You want to leave a little bit to make sure that you're, you don't have your cardstock showing through, or not cardstock, chip, chipboard showing through. You want that all covered. Don't want it poking out. And I'll show you how we will accomplish that in a minute here. So these pieces are no good. They can go in the trash. And we're going to start with our long ends. You're going to take the tape cover off, come up at the middle, starting at the middle, and just press out. We're going to take our bone folder and press down on that to make sure that it is stuck down flat. 
We're going to do the same on the other side. Uh, where'd my pokey tool go? All right. I like to use a pokey tool type thing. Um, that's actually a Cricut weeder that I have, but there's lots of different pokey tools out there you can use. Um, I found this one when I was first looking for things when I was crafting, and I've been really happy with it. I also use it with my scan and cut to weed out when I'm doing vinyl. So, Okay, so now the corner. You want to push in gently. You can either use your bone folder to do that or your fingernail. And you want to do it gently so you don't rip your paper. You just want to kind of push that in so it covers that when you bring up your edge. So then we remove the paper or the tape cover, bring it up in the middle, and bring it out. And then you want to take your bone folder and just kind of push on those corners to make sure they are not sharp. And we'll do the same on the other side. Push up. Push up. Take the tape cover off. And bring that up. All right, so that is the beginning. This is the front, and this is going to be up and down. You want to take your bone folder, gently press where the folding is going to happen, and then gently bring it up on both sides to start giving it that memory that it's going to fold there. So that is our cover. Now, I told you that we wanted to have room for this to go in and that will cover there and go up nicely to the edges of the paper so that will be all covered up then this when it's covered will go here but we still have this here so that is where our bigger piece goes and the five is going to be too long so I'm going to cut this down um, I'm going to try cutting it at four, but I may have to go even shorter than that. Oh, I did something wrong there. I cut more than an inch off, so I don't know why. I measured totally wrong there. So I'm going to find a new piece of paper to put in there. So we're going to go at two and a fourth again. back out to the five. I wonder if I measured that paper wrong. Okay. Okay, five is correct. I just had the original paper measured wrong. All right, so we're going to put tape on all of this again because we want it to go, and you want to make sure the tape's clear out to the edges. And I will show you why in a little bit here, because when you fold this, you don't want it popping up and buckling up. So you want to cover the whole thing with tape. Again, this is a lot how I do my albums so that they don't pop up on me. 
nothing's more frustrating than having an album buckling on you. Okay, and we're going to cut this one edge off so we don't have any sticky showing where we don't want it. All right. And then we'll take the weeder and pull all this tape covering off. Okay. And center it down, place it, burnish it well. And also your paper pad and your date book are going to help hold the edges down on this too, but you don't want it buckling in the center at all. After all, you want a very professional product when you are done. So that's the end of that part. Now we're going to move on to covering the date book. This is a very simple, very inexpensive date book that I bought. And what I like to do, I want at least a half an inch to go over the edge here on each edge so that they would stay stuck down. Um, the original one I did, I did not do that, and I'm having trouble with it not staying down where I want it. So you want to make sure things stay together for you. So you want at least a half inch. Now when we go to do this center section, though, that is not going to allow for a half inch there. So what we will do is we will cut our paper, we'll trim it off, and just have it a quarter inch there. But as I said, when I had a quarter inch on all of it, it did not work. Uh. And I'm going to put art glitter glue all over this. You don't need a lot, and I use the fine tip so you don't really get a lot. Um, you don't want your paper to buckle. Now let's check and make sure this is not a directional paper. I want that to be my front. And we will put this down like that. And let it set for a few minutes. Art glitter glue dries very well, very quickly. I'm going to use some quarter inch, well, the half inch might fit, half inch tape on the spine here. And I'm going to burnish that down well while I'm waiting for that glue to finish drying. take my cover wrap off maybe. Let's burnish this little one on the top here. It goes over the edge so the, when I go to peel the paper it wants to peel the glue strip off too. I don't want that. All right so now I'm going to just gently bring this up, stand it up, Come to the outside here and burnish this down. The reason I'm close covering this with the L with the date book being closed is so that when you close your book inside, you don't end up with pages tearing. One thing I forgot to tell you: you are going to need are magnets. And for this book, I like to use the large magnets. Um, I've used, did a prototype with the small magnets. I really don't think it holds as well. I don't like it. So I'm doing the large magnets. I'm going to take the adhesive off of here to place it. And 
and I will glue that on. Then I'm going to put glue over the rest of the book. Up to the edges to help it adhere. Especially when it adhere around that magnet so it doesn't disappear and start traveling on us. Okay, and then gently bring your paper over and down and press. And you want to hold that for a few minutes so that that glue has a chance to start drying and adhering where it needs to be. Okay, then this is a little more than the half an inch, but it'll be okay. It's better than not enough. So we're going to let that dry a few minutes before we do the next step with that because we're using glue on the that side and we don't want to work with that too quickly. So next we're taking this piece of paper and our three and a half by six and a half inch sheet of paper. And what we're going to do with this is decide what you want on the very front. And I think I want that with the butterfly. Then we're going to just kind of fold it here. Oops, that's the wrong pad. Okay, fold it here and then fold it down. You want to take your bone folder and just kind of make those creases a little bit stronger. And this first crease here that's going to go down, we're going to take that up. Use your bone folder to make it a very tight crease so that when it is on the pad, it will stay closed for you. Let's crease this back one too. A little better. All right. Now we're going to put double-sided tape up here. down here next to the crease. Yeah. Okay. Take the bone folder, burnish that down. If there's anything showing on this side, we want to trim it off. Now to place this perfectly, I like to take my pad, my paper, line them up that way, and then go over and down, and then burnish that. And on this side, I'm going to erase my measurements because I don't want those showing at the craft fair. Don't normally write my measurements on but just for the purpose of the video so you can see the measurements. Okay. And that's that. You also, if you like, can put a little glue here to glue it against the top of the glue part of the pad and that will help hold that down also for you as far as not flipping up inside the book. All right, so we'll put that aside to dry and we'll come back to our book. 
So I think this should be well enough to open up and start working with. We'll work with half at a time. We're going to put our tape around the edge. covering this book is probably the hardest part of this whole deal because it's already made it's already got a spine on it you have to work around all of that Excuse me for getting out of frame there. Okay, now we're going to burnish all that down all the way around. And we're going to miter our corners again like we did for the album part. Okay. And start getting your paper ready to turn over. And we're going to want to cut here at the spine in because that is not going to curl over on our paper very well. So that is going to be separate from the end papers. Okay, so we're going to start with the very ends of our paper. This is a little different than what we did on the other cover because it just is easier to do it this way. Okay, so we got that pushed up. Now you're going to push in at the corners. And you may have to miter the inside edge a little bit to get it to go. Push it up and in. Okay. And the same with the other side. And again, you want to push down on your corners, make sure they are not sharp. Okay. 
And let's do this side. And push in on those corners. And again, you're going to probably have to miter a little bit this edge that's on the inside. Bring this up. final side and bring that up again checking your corners make sure they are not sharp and burnish everything down okay now this part it's only about a quarter of an inch. You're going to fold in and kind of see where that measures at. Cut it. Also going to put a little glue down in there because I'm not sure that's going to be enough tape to hold it. Take our covering off our tape and fold it over and down in there. Make it as straight and as perfect as you possibly can. I know that's difficult. It's kind of a tiny space to work with. And a little more glue. Take that tape off. Put it down in there straighten it as best you can. Okay, now, I think this is the front of my book. Yes, it is. So, the magnet is here. What we want to do now is make a other side for the magnet to stick to. And I usually do um, two one-inch strips for that. So, I'm going to cut those out quick and show you how we do that. Now, this is totally up to you if you want to do it, but I find that they stay closed better if you do this. Okay. Now you take your other magnet Turn this over to the wrong side. Take your other magnet. I got these magnets off Amazon. Put that there like that. And then I glue the other piece to it. And this strip is quite long. We are not going to use near all this. But I'd rather it be a little too long than not long enough, and then you got to start all over. So line this up with that. And again, if you don't get it lined perfectly, or maybe one of your cuts was off just a hair, you can trim it. I've done that before. It's no big deal. So, got that put together. Close up my glue for now. OK. 
Okay, so that's the right side there. Then I like to use my crocodile, crocodile corner chomper to make the corners rounded, give it a more finished look, more professional look. That's how it goes. Got my magnet a little low on this one. Turn this this way. So then what I like to do is I'm going to just cut this off here and I'm going to take my tape, my half inch score tape, if I can find what I did with it. Don't you just love days like that? Oh, it's right in front of me. If it were a snake, it would have fit me. So, I'm gonna take my tape and put it down here. And here. You want to get it up as close to the edge as you can. If you miss and a little goes over, it's not going to matter because this side is going to be down on glued to the book anyway. So that is done. So now we want to line that up again, bring it over. Take the tape off. And you want to go back to the front of your book to make sure that this is going straight and not crooked the best you can and around and go down. Okay, so then your date book opens like this. So the final step is to put everything in this. You want this to be close to the edge, you know, in here to the fold without being on the fold. You don't want it binding up on the fold. So we're going to put the glue on because I need time to adjust things and glue gives me that extra time to do it. If you are one of those one and done people, you can use the double sided tape and just put it in right away. I am not one of those people. If I can substitute glue for double-sided tape and get the same results, I'm going to do it because I am not one and done. I am um, move it and make sure it looks like it's in the right place kind of thing and that side is done. Now for the paper pad. Now I know it's a small paper pad. If people, you know, decide they want another paper pad in here, they can always buy a small paper pad and glue it in. Let me make sure, whoops, I'm too close to that edge. They can buy another paper pad and when this is empty, they can glue it down on there. That would work just fine. Okay, so that is the book. Um, you can put embellishments on this if you like. I'm not sure I want to because I don't want to hide the lilacs that I got showing there. I don't know if there's anything in here that could go up in there. I don't know if they have small enough tags to do that, which you could do. Um, tags are kind of large. You don't want to do too much because if they're going to put this in their um, purse or something, you don't want anything that will knock off. 
So I'm not going to put anything on there. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to show you the first one I made. This is the prototype, and I did actually put this on the front, which I think this paper lended itself to that very easily. It did not have a lot of the, you know, something that I could make on the cover that would be like the perfect centerpiece there. Um, this is the first I did. You can see that why I wanted longer sheets to curl over. I'm going to try putting some tape on these to hold them better. And then this is the thing. That's the first prototype I did for this book. Now this one seems taller. I'm not sure why. But anyway, that's the mini planner that can go in a person's purse. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button and happy planning everyone. Okay, so something that I found out after I'd made several of these and they didn't all go clear to the edge on this book. They don't all have this much paper going up into the book and to give the book a much more finished look since some of these were pulling away that were shorter than these is that um, I'm going to cover the inside here to just give it a more finished look and help hold those that aren't staying down as well so um, actually I think I like that maybe better it's less obtrusive yeah I think I'll go with this one showing so we're gonna glue that down I cut two pieces to fit you'll have to measure your books to see what will work in yours. I actually could have used a piece that was just a little bit wider than this, but this will work and nobody will know the difference. So it's the design of the book. Put that in like that. And I have one for the back side also. All right, so that should work. And that completes our project. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting everyone.